Well, hey, good morning, Bay Chapel. Hey, good morning, Bay Chapel. It's so good to see you, man. What a great day in God's house. And I don't know about you, but I feel Jesus in this room with us today. And I know he's speaking to us, changing our hearts, making us more like him. And it's just good to be in God's presence. Amen. Amen. And it's good to be with you. As Bria mentioned at the beginning, I just want to echo her words. And if you are a guest with us for the first time or if you're watching with us online, we are so glad that you are here. And I pray today you feel right at home. I'm excited to dive into God's word. And so let me just encourage you right now, if you want to go ahead and grab your phone and follow along on the Church Center app, there are notes there. If you've got your Bibles, we're going to go to Joshua chapter 3. Or if you just want to follow along on the screen, you can do that too. Anybody ready to uh, hear from God today? Can I hear an oh yeah? Yeah. I'm I'm excited to dive into God's word. Man, I'm excited to have the middle schoolers in the room. Oh, no, no, no. I'm excited to have the middle schoolers in the room. All right, they're gonna be with me by the end of today. It's gonna be good. No, I really, I want to share a message that is not necessarily just for middle school or high school, or it's, it's for our church, but I really feel like it's, it's an issue and a topic that we're all dealing with, and it's something that regardless of where you're at and the season of life that you're in, it speaks to all of us and God can change and challenge us from his word. And so we're gonna look at Joshua chapter three, but let me just set it up. We started this series last week, When at Home. And, and I'm so convicted about God's word and what he wants to speak to us in this series but it, because I, I believe that now more than ever, the, the home is being challenged. The culture of our homes is, is being challenged. And I want to be a people, not only as the body of Christ, but uh, believers here at Bay Chapel that make a decision that say, like Joshua asked for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I, I don't care what the school system decides or the government decides. Listen, I am living my life by what God has decided for my life. And, and I'm going to speak that over you. I'm going to speak that over my marriage and my kids. And I'm going to do it at the risk of of being countercultural because I want to live my life and I want to follow God's best for my life. Is anybody with me this morning? Amen. Here's the truth. Inside the four walls of your house and mine, the greatest we experience the greatest joys of life and the greatest hurts of our life. And I talked about how last week that that what happens at home shapes the rest of our lives. What happens at home shapes the rest of our life. And last week I I spent a few minutes talking about this idea of being shaped by scripture and how we're not gonna let culture, we're not, not gonna let comparison drive us to make the decisions of our life, but we're gonna stake our claim in what God's word says about our life, who we are, what we're called to be, how we can walk in forgiveness and love and we can speak the truth of God's word over every situation and struggle we go through. And we're gonna be people that are grounded in the truth of God's word. And today I wanna spend a few minutes talking to you with this message title, Clean House. Clean House. How to live pure in a world that's impure. How to live pure in a world that's impure. I remind you, last week we looked at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and how God commands Moses. And Moses is speaking to the next generation. He's speaking to the people that are going to go inherit the promised land. And he's letting them know God's word is this, to write, write, write the law on your hands, write it on your foreheads. Write it wherever you go so that no matter where you go, you will know what God says about what you're going through. And then we looked at Joshua chapter 1 because Joshua is about to lead the people into the promised land. And interestingly, when you read Joshua 1, it's an echo of Deuteronomy 6. God says, of course, that the famous verse in, in verse 9, do not be afraid for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He, he gives them three instructions. He said, be courageous, be faith-filled. He says, be obedient, do what I've asked you to do. And he says this, Don't let the word of God depart from your heart and your mind. Meditate on God's word day and night. 
And so Joshua, I want to pick up right there because Joshua is with the people and we're in Joshua chapter 3. And he's about to take the people across the Jordan River into the promised land. And we're in verse 1 of chapter 3. It says this, early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Before I just pass over this section of scripture, I, I, I think as I was reading this, God spoke to me and reminded me as I think about the ark, it was the physical symbol of God's presence in the Old Testament. That you could look and see the ark and know that God was there. And, and here's the instruction that God gives to the people of Israel. He says this, make sure that you know where the ark is and wherever the ark's at, I need you to stay with it. You know what he's saying is this, make sure that you don't go anywhere in your life and lose sight of the presence of God. He's saying this, if you walk in your home and you can't sense the peace and presence of God, that is a red flag that something is off in your home and in your family. He's saying this, there might be some things that you're putting above God and some things that, some roads that you're traveling down that are taking you away from everything that I have for you. If we don't get anything else in this message series, this, let's make sure that we have hearts and that we are drawn towards the presence and the person of Jesus Christ. That we can sense him in our conversations and the things that we talk about and things that we watch on our television and, and on our devices. That everywhere we go, we make sure that we go with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then he says this in verse 5. Then Joshua told the people, what does he say? Purify yourselves. Then Joshua told the people, purify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. I want to spend a few minutes just breaking down this passage of Scripture because I think it's interesting that right before God's about to do a miracle, God says, I want you to prepare yourself, and here's how you're going to do it. You're going to purify yourselves. In the Old Testament, many times there would be purification ceremonies, and it was an outward symbol of an inward work that God was doing in people's hearts. Everybody, purity is the preparation and the training ground for the blessing and favor of God in our life. Jesus, when he's on Mount Beatitude, he says this, is his most famous sermon, he's blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see who? They'll see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I think about how often we get so attracted to the things that people see. We get so motivated by the things that the world calls success, but God looks to the deep places of our heart. I think about 1 Samuel 16 when the prophet shows up, he's looking for the next king of Israel and he shows up to the house of Jesse and Jesse's got his boys lined up at the house, in the house. And I love what the Bible says. It says when Samuel walks in the house, he looks at, one of the sons, Eliab, and, 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 and the Bible says when he sees Eliab, he says, this must be the one. This must be the one. And God, he just in a gentle way, he kind of pulls Samuel to the side and he says, nope, nope. Hey, Samuel, I, I don't care about the countenance or the stature or the significance. Man looks at the outward things, but I look at the heart. Here's the struggle for us, everybody. We live in a world that's chasing status, success, and significance. Hey, students, you're surrounded by a group of friends that are chasing status, significance, and success. But you know what I love about God? Is he knows that there's a little boy that's out in the backyard taking care of sheep. And you know what? Even his dad doesn't see significance in him. 
But God sees the heart of that young boy and he says, you know what? I can take a boy with a pure heart. As a matter of fact, if I can put some stones in his hand, I can turn him into a giant killer. Here's the truth, everybody. We're so focused on what the world thinks about us that we forgot what God thinks about us. God's seeking people who want to spend time with him, who have a pure heart and a pure motivation. And here's the truth. We can walk into a room like this and our family can look good and we can, we can play the game. We can hide the truth and we can front like everything is okay. But here's the truth. God sees to the deepest places of our soul. He knows our motivation. He knows our heart. And he's looking for people who are pure in heart. And here's the danger, everybody, of not walking in purity to God. Number one is this. We lose our vision. We lose our vision. We lose the purpose and direction for our life. Here's the truth. Nobody stands at an altar smiling, holding hands and envisions selfishness and stress and a lack of trust and brokenness and heartache and abuse. Nobody ever stands at an altar and envisions that. It happens one small choice at a time. No, nobody for the first time makes a small bet on a game and envisions a life that is consumed and bound up by greed and gambling and, and chasing the world's success. Nobody shows up at a party for the first time and has an innocent drink or takes a pill or, or smokes something. I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but nobody shows up for the first time and does that. Man, how could I completely keep my life bound in addiction and ruin myself? The truth about impurity and the way of sin is it's everybody. The enemy doesn't come to make life hard. He comes to make life hopeless. He doesn't wanna just make your life uncomfortable. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And here's the truth. If you don't know where your life is going, the enemy will find a road for you to travel on. Middle school and high school students, if you don't know who your godly friends are, the enemy will find some friends for you. Let me tell you, you got to have a vision for your life. you got to have a place that you're going, a dream that you're chasing, a passion in your heart for God. And say, you know what, I don't care what the world throws my way. I've decided I'm building my life on what Doug just sang about. I'm building my life on God's word. Here's the truth. When you lose your why, you will lose your way. You gotta know why you exist and what God has called you to do. And if we're gonna win at home, we need vision at home. Maybe as families, we need to take a few minutes this week. Let me just give you a practical next step and go, you know what? We're gonna write a vision statement for our family. We're gonna put it on a wall somewhere. Our, our family, we exist to worship God, to live with purpose and to love deeply. I, I'm just throwing an idea out there. Maybe you sit down with your family this week and go, you know what, we're gonna be a family of vision that we're gonna live our life and who God is. Here's what Proverbs 29 says, where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. And another translation, it says this, if a nation is not guided by God, the people will lose self-control. Is that not a picture of the world we're living in or what? Where there is no vision or direction, people don't even know what, what to do or what to think. Not only do we lose vision, we lose common sense. I think I'm safe to say our world has lost its mind. We, we have. It's so disheartening to watch the news, to go on social media. And, and you say, Pastor, you don't know... Listen, this has affected my family just as much as it has anybody else. It has. It's made family reunions difficult, challenging as believers to navigate conversations and sin and struggles in people's lives. It's, hit, it's hitting everybody. And it's, I, I, I'll tell you, that's why I invited our students to stay in because as families, I, I am, 
my heart is heavy for our families. It is, because I don't want us to be people that lose our way and to lose common sense in a world that's lost its mind. We're, we're living in a nation where good is called evil and evil is called good. We've replaced sound judgment with what feels good. And Paul warns Timothy, his son in the faith, when he says this in, in 2 Timothy 4, he says, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own evil desires and they will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Here's the truth, everybody, and I know that why it's quiet on a, in a message like this and I'm challenging us and, and God's word, it pierces deep into our soul. But the truth is, is that oftentimes we show up to church looking to feel good rather than be good. We look for a message that just helps us feel better about how we're living instead of being convicted and going, God, I wanna live in a way that honors you and is completely surrendered and sold out to your will and your way. Let's be people that are built on God's word. Let's use common sense. And number three is this, we lose our identity. We lose vision, we lose common sense, and we lose our identity. You know what, you know what God says to Joshua, that's what I love. He says this, stay close to the ark. Stay close to the ark. You're about to inherit a land. You're about to walk into a land that's filled with all kinds of other gods. What I need to make sure you know is that if you stay close to me, you're okay. Because here's what happens. When you walk into a place, whether it's a new land, whether it's your middle school or high school, whether it's your workplace or, or, or a, a restaurant with another family, I, I don't care where you go. Here's the truth. If you, if you walk into a place that doesn't identify with the same values and characteristics and you lose sight of who God is and who you are, you'll start to become more like them. And God says this, you gotta stay close to the ark. You gotta stay close to my presence because when you know who I am, you will know who you are. Let me say it again, because you're real quiet here at this Baptist church on a Sunday morning. When you know who I am, you will know who you are. If you're losing sight of your identity, get closer to Jesus, all right? If you're confused about who you are, draw near to Jesus and life becomes clear and things begin to make sense. And that's the reason middle school parents that I just wanna invite us together because I'll be honest, we've got a seventh grade and sixth grade and there's some days that we feel like we have no idea what we're doing. Anybody else with me in the room? The rest of you are lying. <laughs> Here's the truth, we're in this together. And so this Wednesday night, I'd love for you to hang out with us. We're not coming with all the answers. We just wanna ask questions and, and give sound doctrine and ideas about way that we can live out being the family of God and follow Jesus at home, amen. Here's what 2 Corinthians 7 says. It says, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. There was a significant marriage decision that Jen and I made about five years ago. And it has changed, changed our home in a, in a huge way, everybody. It wasn't a decision to have more children, to travel more, to eat differently. No, actually five years ago, we made the decision that we were moving from a queen size bed to a king size bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Won't he do it? Yes, he will. I, I remember that first night in that bed thinking, how did it take us 13 years to make such a wise decision in our home? Oh, thank you, Lord. I can spread out and not touch and just have my own space. It's a wonderful thing. I remember it. So on Saturday morning, Jen was on next door and she found somebody in our community that had this, it, it wasn't super intentional. She found somebody that was for really cheap uh, getting rid of uh, this king size bed set. She called me and said, Wes, let's get it while it's here. It's 
big, I don't know, yard sale in our community. And so I call somebody from the church, man, can you bring your truck over? Let's get this thing. We didn't have a whole lot of time to get prepared. We go and get the bed set. He and I were moving this into our room. Our bed's still there. And so here he is in our, our bedroom. I'm like, well, man, I, I have no idea what's under this bed. But we're about to find out. Mattress first. And, I, you know, as, as the box springs are coming up, I'm trying to peek like, oh, God, oh, God. And I'll never forget just the anxiety attack, attack I had as we pulled those box springs up. I mean, socks and dust. I don't even want to go into I want you to think better about me and my wife and our family. <laughs> you know, it was in that moment that I just thought, you know what, I, up until this day, I thought that we were clean people, but now I'm second guessing that. <laughs> you, know, you know, the truth is, whether it's under your bed or the app on your cell phone, or the direct message on Instagram or the thoughts that you're thinking at night. There is a place that we tend to hide the things in our life that we don't want anyone to see. Things that, you know, if we keep them in there long enough, maybe we'll just forget about them or maybe we'll just live like this so long that we just get used to our dirt and think that that is okay. And here's the truth, is that maybe while I can't see it, maybe nobody else in your life can see it. God knows. God knows. He knows what you're looking at on the phone. He knows what I'm looking at on my phone. He knows the thoughts that I'm thinking about. And today, everybody, he wants to take inventory of our life and he wants to clean house. He wants to clean house. And I don't say this in any kind of condemning way because I'm as convicted as anybody that God needs to purify my heart and mind. And here's why, not just, just so I just follow these religious rules. No, I wanna be usable in the hands of a mighty God. I wanna be like David that says, God, whatever you have for me, I am I'm surrendered, I'm usable, I'm available. Would you just put some stones in my hand so I can kill some giants in my life? I want to be surrendered to your will and your way. Hey, everybody, I want in this house there to be some teenagers that are so surrendered to the will of God that he does things in you that even your family goes, wow. That they're amazed by the plan and the, the purpose of God in your life. He wants to do that. He wants to clean house in our lives. If you don't mind, let me take about seven more minutes and just give us a few ideas about how we can live this out practically in our home. Is that all right? Either way, I'm gonna do it, all right? Joshua 24, <laughs> look, look with me. Joshua 24, this is a lengthy passage of scripture, but hang on, it says this, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. They're in the pr promised land now. He says, put away forever the idols your ancestors worshiped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the God of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Verse 20 goes on, he says this. If you abandon the Lord and serve other gods, he will turn against you and destroy you, even though he has been so good to you. You know, I never want to get to the place in my life that I'm so selfish and prideful that God looks at me and he says, you know what, I don't think I can use him to accomplish my purpose anymore. I don't want to be so consumed with my ways and my earthly gods that I don't experience the, the Holy Spirit's power working in my life. He says, that, watch out for that, watch out for that. But the people answered Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. You are a witness to your own decision, and Joshua said. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied, we are witnesses to what we have said. All right then, destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord. You know what Joshua says? Clean house, clean house. 
if this is the statement you're making and the direct declaration over your life, clean house. Maybe today we need to go home and go, God, what are the areas in our life that don't honor and please you? Is it the way that my kids see me talking to my wife? Is it the frustration that I have when they do something I don't like and they see anger well up in me? Is it the things, the, the coarse joking and the entertainment that we allow on all our devices? What is it in our life that we need to go, God, you know what? It's time that we purify our hearts and our home. And three ways that we can do this. Number one, we've got to move the line. We've got to move the line. We live in a culture and a world that tries to keep moving the line closer and closer to sin. And I'm ready to push back and say, you know what? I want to move the line back toward what Jesus says about my life. Let, why don't we just push the line back a little bit? Why don't we move the line? I, I think that we, we live in a culture that says, you know what, if the line's here, I, I wanna live as close to I, I can to the line to make sure, you know, that I love God, but that I have as much fun as I can. I wanna live right here on the edge. What, what if every area of life worked that way? What, what if you got in a plane and the pilot said, you know what, we have just, just enough gas to fuel to get us where we're going, so we're not gonna worry about fuel, f filling up, you know. We, I think we could just make it, no. Take the extra few minutes and fill up, buddy. I don't wanna live on the edge. You know, I think we have just enough supports for this bridge so that it won't, it won't crumble in, into the bay when people drive over it. No. They put up enough support and strength that in the middle of a hurricane, it can withstand the greatest storms. Why don't we make sure that the line that we draw in our home and our family says, you know what, I don't even wanna get close to the edge. Let's make sure that we put up some boundaries that when even the enemy tries to show up at our front door, we give him an uppercut punch, you know, a little karate kick and say, get out of here, devil. We put some guardrails in our house because we wanna live a life that honors God. We're gonna move the line. First Corinthians six, Paul says this, run from sexual sin. No other sin clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Second Timothy two, what does he say? Run, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteousness, faithfulness, and peace. Here's what we do when at home. We make decisions like, you know what? We're not gonna have devices in the bedroom. I know it seems inconvenient, but we're not gonna do it. We're gonna put covenant eyes on all of our devices. Somebody's gonna know where we're at on the internet at all times. Here's the truth. We have Life360 so that we know where our family goes, but why would we let them go anywhere in the world on the internet without knowing? In your notes, there's some links to, to resources that can help us in these areas. Number one, we're gonna move the line. Number two, we're gonna magnify the cost because the devil does the exact opposite. The devil wants to minimize sin in your life. He says lies like this, it won't hurt anyone, you deserve it. Oh, you can handle it. Here's the truth, you can handle it, but five minutes of pleasure can lead to a lifetime of pain. And I would rather choose God's best for my life. What does it cost? Is it gonna cost my marriage, my family, ministry, a life of serving Jesus and following God? It's not worth it. I'd rather choose God's way. I believe this is a room full of people that say, you know what? I wanna count the cost and I wanna follow Jesus in every area of my life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let, let's magnify the cost. James does this in chapter one. He says, but we are tempted when we are drawn away and trapped by our own evil desires, then our evil desires conceive and give birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, it gives birth to death. So it, it might not feel like death today, but that's the way the enemy works. He makes it feel just good enough that in the temporary moment, it doesn't create a lot of pain. But over the course of our life, it brings heartache and loss and keeps us separated from God. And just like Joshua says to the people, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna set aside the gods. We're gonna set aside the gods of this life, of living for the world, trying to be successful in the world's eyes. We're gonna serve the one and true living God.
Let, let's count the cost. Let's magnify the cost. And number three, let's make purity our priority. David says this in Psalm 24, and we'll close with this passage. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. What, what does he say right here? He says, those who experience the fullness of being with Jesus, knowing God, and a life of blessing, those people live a life of purity, whose hearts are completely surrendered and sold out to God. Church, I'm so convicted about this message, I feel like doing a whole series on, on purity. One, because it's very personal for me. And I, I recognize the time, but let me just take another minute. Because I grew up in a pastor's home I love God with all my heart. I love Jesus with all my heart. I did. I remember at five years old, I gave my heart to Jesus. I also got saved at the altar every Sunday night, every week of my entire life. <laughs> I've always had a tender heart for God. I told you last week about how I grew up just wanting to play the keyboard and make music for Jesus and had a heart for worship. But I was also exposed to pornography at a young age. At Robbie's house, I was only about 12 years old. I'll never forget being in his bedroom with a few boys in our neighborhood. And that one small moment, not knowing, having any idea where I was or what was happening, what entered my heart turned into years in my teens struggling with things that I shouldn't see and look at. And I'm thankful today to tell you that I'm, I'm pastoring from a place of purity and freedom in that area, but I love you enough to be extremely vulnerable with you. Because I realize that there are men and women in the room who are struggling with that same issue. And there are teenagers in the room that you've never talked to your parents about. I remember, I remember running home from Robbie's house, walking in the door and crying my eyes out saying, Dad, I don't know what just happened but I just saw something I shouldn't see. And the enemy's lie to us is this, if, if, you'll just, if you'll just keep it quiet and keep it hidden, you'll figure it out on your own. Don't let the devil deceive you. Hear me today, church. Don't let the devil deceive you like that. It is a lie from the enemy. And that's just one issue. But here's what I realized. There's areas of purity in our lives, whether it's, sexual sin or something that's just got a hold of our heart. Maybe we're addicted to being on social media and caring what people think about us. I don't know what it is. Let me say this, there is no shame in this house. This is a place where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But here's what I want. I want every teenager to be free. I want every husband and wife to live free. And here's my prayer today. If there be any place in your heart that you say, I'm struggling, and this is an issue or I'm dealing with something and God's word is convicting me today, why don't, why don't we just leave it at the altar this morning and say, God, would you set me free of everything that's controlling my life? Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Why don't you just bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? Church, I realize this is a heavy message, so I just want to give a, a moment for the Holy Spirit to work. And I don't apologize in any way for bringing it because it's the truth of God's word. God, I know today you want us so much to walk in victory, to walk in freedom. 
whatever idols are in our life, every stronghold. You know all about it, God. You know all about it, God, and today you want to set us free. Maybe you're here today and you say, Wes, I'm away from Jesus, but I want to give him my life, surrender everything to him. I want him to be the Lord of my life. You're here and God is convicting you right now. With every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you, just raise your hand right there and say, that's me, God save me, Jesus save me. God bless you, God bless you. I see your hand, ma'am. Anybody else right now in this moment, God's speaking to you. God bless you, buddy. God sees you. Why don't you just say a simple prayer like this as Jesus come in my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Be the Lord of my life. Set me free, Lord, from the things that have had me bound. I repent of my sin. And Jesus, I invite you in to be my Lord. From this day forward, I'm gonna serve you and follow you. (laughs) Right now, I just wanna invite you. Maybe you need to put your hands out and just say, God, I surrender the areas of my life that have had me bound. Do something physical in a way that, that you get God's attention right now, that he knows your heart, that say, God, I've been living for myself. I've been, I, I've been looking at some things. I've been doing some things. I've been talking in ways that don't honor you, but God, I'm ready for you to purify me. Make me pure in heart, God. We repent today. We repent today of everything in our life that doesn't look like you, and we make you our Lord and Savior. Right now, Jesus, we thank you for your word, and I pray that it would change and challenge us. As we just continue in this series, God, let us practically live this out and let's win at home. Areas of purity and following Jesus. God, we love you. We thank you and we give you all the praise for what you have done and what you're gonna do. And today we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Could you just help me celebrate change lives this morning? People saying yes to Jesus. It's been good being in God's house, amen? Amen. Hey, why don't, why don't you go ahead and stand with us and we'll pray one last time before we close this morning. Let me just remind you again, Zeal Night this Wednesday, parents meeting, we'll, we'll hang out for a few minutes as well. Make sure to go online and grab all those resources on the app as well this week. God, we love you. I just thank you so much for your presence and your spirit in this place. I pray as we leave, God, that we would leave and we would stay close to the ark, God. We would stay close to your spirit, that Jesus, you would be with us everywhere we go. God, I pray, God, be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We love you. We give you all the glory and praise, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, church.